خب سلام به همه دوستان عزیز هم زبانان هم گلان هم وطنان که اینجا هستن از یوزوال we're going to switch between Persian and English um, it's important to keep parts of this in uh, in um, English because that's the way people find out about us and about our program and um, decide about you know taking courses or collaborating with us and so on so um, with that in mind I'm just going to be we're going to be depending on who's interviewing and you know to um, switch between languages so I want to ask, uh, invite my colleague, Dr. Musavi Marjan Aziz, to also come in and um, get started. Sure. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our call event. Welcome gathering. Um, so today um, we will uh, introduce our um, new faculty assistant, John uh, Molan. And um, after that, we have a conversation and I give a review of Roshan last year events. And we have, um, we have invited Dr. Ali Apasi to talk about Persian studies at uh, University of Maryland. And at the end, we will uh, play a performance by our guest, um, Behra Tabakweli and Ms. Mina Shahi. Um, so without further ado, I just introduce John and um, John Molan is the Roshan Institute for Persian Studies, new and um, he, he's our new faculty assistant in 2020. He graduated from the University of Pennsylvania with a degree in history and Islamic studies. Uh, last spring, he learned flag, uh, he earned flagship certification in Persian as part of the University of Maryland uh, Persian language program. He also works on the Persian Digital Humanity Team OCR research project as a graduate assistant, a role which he has continued to play as the project's new digital specialist. In his free time, John enjoys um, learning languages, reading about music theory, and cooking. John, خیلی خوش اومدی. دوست داری که یه چند جمله برای ما صحبت بکنی؟ حتما، نیستی مرجان جون برای این معرفی. همجوری که مرجان قبلا گفتی من جان مولان هستم و دستیار دفتار و تحقیق روشنم در سال 2020 از دانشگاه پینتوانیا فراغو تحصیل شدم رشتم تاریخ و اصلا شناسی بود بعدا رفتم دانشگاه مریلند اتفاقا من تو کاریس پاک بزرگ شدم پس انتخاب آسونی بود ولی گواهی به فارسی گرفتم از برنامه فارسی مریلند و در زم دستیار تحقیق پروژه علوم انسانی دیجیتال بودم امسال خوشبختانه فرصت داشتم به برنامه برگردم و مریلند امیدوارم امسال بتونم بهتر با دوستان روشن آشنا بشم و بتونم به همه همکارانم و استادهای روشن کمک کنم حالا دیگه چی بسیار تشکر میکنم از دوتا کشاورز و مرجان به خاطر همه مهراشون و این فرصت خیلی ممنون جان بعد بگم جان 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 اصلا مرجان جان و و علی جان ما خیلی خوشحالیم که با ما هستی جان و واقعا همونطور که از صحبت های جان خودتون متوجه شدین فارسی رو به نحو احسن یاد گرفته ما در واقع اینجا داریم الان به قول شیرازی ها پوز برنامه فارسی مونو میدیم یعنی داریم نشون میدیم که بچه هایی که و جوان هایی که زبان آموزانی که از این برنامه ها رد میشن در چه حدی توانایی های زبانی دارن و همینطور فرهنگی آشنایی با ادبیات و غیره آشنایی با بستلا وضعیت اجتماعی و فرهنگی و هنری در داخل ایران خاطر اینکه کورس های خیلی مختلفی فرمی دارن 
Um, and so this is this is a great pleasure. Mitunam as to Farad Bepursam, John, Chetur should be fake for Siot Gereftan of Dodi. Hob, um, et a foran, um, man Kablan, Arabi Dars Mukundam, Yanidar Sora Abado Domadonishko. But by Adam, I fake Karamon Shoy, the Hom, uh, Masalan, Etro Otta Havorbion E, Dars Behunam, a fake ham hob. یعنی فکر بدی نیست اگه بتونم یک کم فارسی یا بگیدم و بعدا نمیدونم بیشتر و بهتر به فرهنگ ایران و ادبیات فارسی آشنا شدم و نمیدونم بعد از این به قول معروف the rest is history خیلی عالی من که شنیدم تو اشعار مولانا رو هم بلدی ولی اونو میذاریم برای یه روز دیگه خب Thank you so much. That's a that's a great uh, pleasure. We ha this John is not the first product of our program. We have worked with. We have always benefited from um, amazing graduates who come to us with uh, tremendous skill. Um, in no small part because of having uh, master pedagogues and um, linguists like Professor Abbasi, whom we will introduce shortly in this program. But um, I think at this point, um, we are, are we going to have a review or are we, tell me what, what we are doing yeah, now. Um, I mean, Behrad is not here. We'd love to have a conversation with Behrad, but he's not here. So I would be happy to talk yeah. about, yeah. I will give a very brief review of our cultural programs last year. Yeah, we had actually very, very, um, yeah, fruitful and you know cultural series um also because of the fact that we get together with dr musavi here and it's so much easier when you have different perspectives and come together with colleagues and hopefully we'll continue to be very active in this area sure, yeah i'm going to share my screen my powerpoint um so can you see the my first slide we see, yes, we see the title of the program. Yes, yes. okay. So, um, Roshan Institute's multidisciplinary events have the um, express goal of expanding the horizons of Persian studies and often attract large, enthusiastic and diverse audiences, including students, faculty, and members of the greater community. Uh, with the awareness, and um, sorry, every year the Institute plans and organizes several events for each semester with the awareness that at least one or two spontaneous occasions for additional programs and programming emerge. After um, events uh, planned for um, spring 2020 had to be put on hold at the last minute with the sudden closure of campus, the Institute's diverse cultural programming resumed in the fall with the input of myself and previous assistant Garrett Yochtin and the use of technology to ensure our cultural and educational presence among the students and faculty as well as members of the wider community. The online format of the events um, gave the Institute an opportunity to collaborate with institutions such as the University of California Irvine, regardless of location. Um, now I move on to um, introduce the first event, Roshan Institute's fall welcome event that happened on September the 4th. It featured a historic collaboration between Iranian and American musicians. This collaboration is sponsored by Roshan Institute and uh, the North American Iranian Friendship Association in Tehran. And they brought together the Tehran Chamber Orchestra and the in-series opera in Washington, DC. Um, then we, in October, we lost uh, our Maestro Shajarian. So in, uh, we organized a, a, a virtual memoriam uh, in October. Uh, it included the presentation of musical performances by seven transnational musicians and conversation with the artists and academic members from across the US. This event was held in um, collaboration with the University of California at Irvine and had over 215 attendees. Um, then as part of Mir Jalali speaker series, uh, we had Dr. Turaj Daryayi in November. Uh, Dr. Daryayi presented on Mazdaq, the Dervishes and Revolution in Iranian Society. They even drew an audience of more than 250 listeners. 
followed by that, uh, we had a screening of a documentary, Taqa Kasra, Wonder of Architecture, and a conversation with the director, Pejman Akbarzadeh. Uh, this happened in December. Um, in February, we had three events. The first one was another screening of a documentary called Dingo Moro, Iran's Black South. It was in honor of Black History Month. Uh, and the event also was followed by a Q&A session with the director, Kamran Haydari. Our next event was um, the second lecture by Dr. Turaj Daryayi as part of the Mir Jalali speaker series. The title was The Perfumed Garden of Iran, A Contribution to the History of Smell and Order. Um, the event drew an audience around 75. In February, uh, toward the end of February, we had an event in Persian, and we share Islaf at Taqir Khat Farsi wa Arabi by Dr. Azita Hamedani. She presented a lecture in Persian script, uh, in Persian on script reforms from the Perso Arabic script to the Latin script. Um, for the International Women's Day in 2021, I mean, March 2021, Roshan hosted a streaming of a video entitled The Woman I Want about Zandok Shirazi, an Iranian pioneer in journalism and women's rights movements, followed by a conversation with the artist Gita Hashemi. Um, we also hosted, um, um, Behrad is here, good. Yes, I can admit him, so I think. Uh, as part of your Shatir speaker series, we featured a panel discussion moderated by Professor Shelby Talhami of the University of Maryland. Um, and the title was um, Nuclear Deal Options and um, Consequences of Iran's Upcoming Elections. The panelists included uh, Dr. Behruz Qamari Tabrizi, Negar Murtazavi, and Dr. Asal Rod. Um, and um, followed, following um, that, Round table, we had uh, the Yarshatter speaker series by Dr. Behruz Amari Tabrizi of Princeton University in April. The title of his presentation was oh, Mystical she, Modernity she she um, Walter Benjamin through Ali Shariati. This wow. event had an audience of nearly 200. Um, may I ask everybody to mute? Uh, can everybody please mute their microphone? I can check. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sorry for the interruption. And so I also have a great news to share with you. In September, Roshan Institute Professor Dr. Matthew Miller and his team uh, were awarded $100,000 by the Andrew Mellon Foundation to continue their work on developing free, easy to use software for digitizing Persian and Arabic texts. This grant follows um, about 283,000 awards from the National Endowment for the Humanities, which Dr. Miller received in February. Um, congratulations, Dr. Miller. And, um, Upcoming events in fall 2021, we have the Roundtable Act Now with the um, theater practitioner Javad Alipur on September 30th, the coming Thursday. Um, Javad Alipur is an activist and theater artist. He will discuss his uh, recent play, Rich Kids, A History of Shopping Malls in Tehran. And um, Dr. Keshavarz and me will um, moderate the round table, which happened on October the, I mean, the round table, as I said, um, happens on uh, September 30th, but the show, you can watch it on September 30th and also October the 1st and the 2nd. It's pay what you can. Yes, I imagine it. we'll be sending out um, announcements and we have been sending and we'll continue to send announcements Perfect. out for that, for people who, a time they can join and see the show. Absolutely, sure. Um, the other event that we are planning is a film, film screening uh, of um, Puran de Rakshande, and it's Puran de Rakshande, a prominent uh, woman film director. Internal um, Children, Bachehoy Abadi will be the film that we will uh, do an online screening of, and then we'll invite her for a virtual QA. Uh, this will happen in um, mid October. 
and um, as Mir Jalali speaker series from November 12th to November 15th, Dr. Mohamed Tawakoli Tarqi of the University of Toronto will visit the University of Maryland. Dr. Tawakoli is the director of the Elahe Omidyar Mir Jalali Institute of Iranian Studies. Um, while in College Park, Dr. Tawakoli will um, deliver a lecture entitled Modern Iran, Diagnostic History and Prognostic uh, Politics. And that was it. Looking forward to seeing you all in all these events. And uh, thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you, Majajan. So um, I don't know if Behrad came in. Behrad, are you there? Behrad John? Yes, I, yes, I'm here, but uh, I'm on. Salam. Salam. Uh, Salam. 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 میخوام تشکر کنم که برای ما یه برنامه تهیه کردی که در قسمت آخر این برنامه میبینیمش و ضبط کردیم اون رو برای ما آماده کردیم با خانم مینا شاهی ولی فکر کردم که خیلی خوب اگه دوستان یه مقدار درباره کارا و فعالیت های شما بشنون از خودت خواهش میخوام من تازه پنج سال اینجا هستم و خب در ایران در دانشگاه هنر رشته موسیقی خوندم تا مقطع کارشناسی ارشد و در دانشگاه هنر و دانشگاه هنرهای زیبا تدریس میکردم تا پیش از سال 80 البته و در ایران مدیر برنامه های استاد محمد رضا لطفی بودم و همینطور سرپرست گروه هم نوازان مه و ارکستر ملی سازهای ایران و کنسرت های متعددی رو در ایران و خارج از کشور داشتم ناز به شورای نویسندگان کتاب سال شیدا و مجله تخصصی موسیقی فرهنگ و آهنگ بودم و حدود پنجاه مقالم پابلیش شده از من در حوزه موسیقی و فرهنگ شده است خیلی ممنون درباره این برنامه کوتاهی که ما ضبط کردیم از شما چون ما واقعا دلمون میخواد که روشن هنرمندانی رو که ما بر حسب اتفاق شانس اینو داریم که بهشون دسترسی داشته باشیم بشناسونه و این یکی از خواهم کلمه انگلیسی شو بکار نبرم ولی یکی از, از, از شانس های ماست و امکاناتی است که ما داریم من از به همین دلیل از براد عزیز خواستم که برای ما یه قطع کودا حاضر کنن که حالا در پایان برنامه پخشش میکنیم ولی میخوای برای اون بگی که این تیکه چجوری به اون رسیدین که اون تیکه رو اجرا کنین و بله حتما یه مدار چون فرصت ما کم بود در سفانه و فرصت تمرین کردن ما هم باز کم بود به نسبت من تصمیم گرفتم که واگذارش کنم به خواننده و گفتم که تو هر چی برات راحتی همون رو انتخاب کن من تو رو فالو میکنم و یه بخش در افشاریشون آماده کرد و یک تصمیفی از عارف غزوینی که با امکانات محدودی که در داخل خانه هام استودیو میشه کار کرد در حال این رو ضبط کردیم امیدوارم که به گوش دوستان خوش بیاید و همینطور ضعف های احتمالی ما رو به خاطر فرصت کم که احتمالا پیش آمده است به گوش لطف بشنوند و ببخشم خواهش خیلی هم خیلی هم زیباست و در زم قذلی که ایشون میخونن قبل از اینکه به ترانه برسن یک قذل زیبای حافظ هست که قبل از اینکه اون برنامه شروع بشه من اون قذل رو خدمتتون خواهم خوند چون فکر میکنم که مهمه که به شکل کلامی و خوندن بشنویدش و بعد اینکه چطور توی موسیقی قرار میگیره خب مرجتون الان دیگه 
وقتشه که از دکتر عباسی خواهش کنیم که به ما به پیوندن اینجا هستن علی جان I'm going to switch to English and we record these programs and then on our sites they become possibilities for um, uh, people finding out about what is available to us and so I think um, introducing an asset like Professor Abbasi has to be done that way so that people can really connect with us on that. So thank you so much for being with us. Let me just say very briefly that if you look at his bio on U UMD site, it's very simple and modest. Um, he introduces himself as um, an applied linguist, also a pedagogue. Um, I know for reasons of uh, collaboration and, and collegial contact that he has award-winning articles in, the, in journals of linguistic, where, which are not easily accessible to many people. I also can tell you that um, he has been doing various roles in terms of advising our English, uh, our Persian major students um, our summer institute program, he has occasionally uh, directed that, um, which many of you know that it, it has learners who come to the program from one end at the beginning of the summer and leave fluent at the end of the summer. So that is being brought to our attention multiple times. Ali John, welcome. I, we would be um, really, thankful if you say a little bit about the program and um, you know we do have other very um, distinguished colleagues and hopefully in future occasions we will introduce more people yeah. please go ahead Ali. thank you so much dr kishabars for your generous introduction uh first off i'd like to welcome john on board i i've had the pleasure of teaching and learning with him for more than a year, I think. Um, it's been really uh, a pleasure on my part to be with him. I also like to thank uh, my colleague, Dr. Marjan Moussadi and also John for their hard work on organizing this event. Um, in the next few minutes, I would like to um, talk about um, our degree uh, programs, plus a number of the curricular features of, uh, of, uh, of our undergraduate program. So I have to say that um, Persian has come a long way uh, since the early 19, uh, 2000, when it was in the ranks of languages like um, Swahili, or in the so-called rarely taught languages, when if a student wanted to pursue Persian, our school would um, match or pair them with a uh, Persian um, speaker. So it was uh, uh, under the designation of FOLA, uh, and FOLA st standing for foreign language. So it has come a long way and it has uh, become um, a, a very elaborate and comprehensive undergraduate program. Um, uh, I dare say that it, it's perhaps the most comprehensive and elaborate undergraduate degree program in North America. Uh, so this expansion has been in part thanks to the generous um, community support, namely uh, the support from Roshan Cultural Institute, uh, the, the commitment of the University of Maryland itself, and uh, numerous uh, federal grants. And on top of that, in part uh, because of the leadership of Dr. Kishabaz, who has um, um, been expanding Persian studies in exciting new uh, directions. So, Ali John, sorry to interrupt you. We can't see your PowerPoint slides. Right. Sorry. 
Do you okay. see it now? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. So in the next uh, few minutes, I will um, say a few words about our degree programs, our summer institute and features, prominent features of our undergraduate um, curriculum. My focus will be on the language aspect of the curriculum and less on the um, other aspects, um, content areas of our degree programs. So to begin with, uh, we offer a, a Persian major and uh, this Persian major has 44 credits. Typically, I have uh, noted typically because the degree requirements varies depending on the um, knowledge of language that students bring in. If uh, a student comes in with zero knowledge of Persian, so this 44 credits apply to them. If they are from a heritage background, they speak Persian at home, for instance, or have um, done um, um, Persian at other institutes, institutions and are able to transfer those credits, the number of required credits um, would vary. So assuming that a student comes into the program with absolutely no knowledge of Persian, they will be completing 44 credits. A third assumption is that they are not um, majoring in Persian only and are either double major or have a minor. So depending on the these scenarios, the number of credits will vary. But typically, so 44 credits, this would involve 26 lower credit, uh, lower level language credits. Basically, they are focused on language courses. They range from 100 level to 300 level um, courses. Um, the remaining 18 upper level credits are um, in, in, involve content-based courses. Um, I will elaborate on this particular model uh, uh, momentarily, and also courses that are taught in Persian fully with no linguistic accommodations, as well as courses. Um, and they range from uh, Iranian cinema, modern Iran literature, theater, digital humanities, and Persian social linguistics. A second uh, degree um, program, undergraduate degree program, is our minor, which involves 29 credits. Um, so again, I have, I have to emphasize that typically it involves 29 credits, um, so which involve um, 40, uh, sorry, 14 credits um, that are considered prereqs, prerequisites and 15 core credits that uh, typically are language courses plus one or two English courses. Again, if a student comes in with previous knowledge of the language, the number of credits varies. And I have to say that uh, uh, all students um, doing a major and minor are automatically, automatically qualify for our undergraduate scholarships. There are two that applies to all major and minor students. Uh, one is the Amuzagar Undergraduate Scholarship in Persian Studies, and the other one is Persian Studies Award, Essay Award. Uh, there are uh, two other scholarships, uh, namely Summer Institute Scholarship that I will momentarily uh, talk further about, plus um, a scholarship that is um, for our simulated immersion program, which again, I will elaborate uh, in shortly. So a second uh, component of our undergraduate program, which, which this is not a degree program, more in the line of a continuing um, uh, 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 studies. This summer institute is open to all graduate and undergraduate students. Uh, as well as working professionals from across the US. Uh, it involves uh, a roster of all courses from 100 all the way to 400 level courses. It's very intensive. It involves 180 hours of contact hours that, that is in-class instruction, as well as out-of-class language and cult culture exposure. Uh, so totally, if we add them up, they amount to 260 hours in all. It's very intensive and it runs um, for nine weeks. 
uh, daily from 9.30 to 5. It, uh, as part of the curriculum of this intensive program, um, students in, um, are experience a range of um, co-curricular activities, uh, namely reading club, cooking club, dance and musical instrument lessons, conversation partners, guest speaker lectures, and uh, more. And I have to say that this is um, possible with the help of the proverbial uh, village members. Uh, I have to note that, for instance, this um, Amiri or Janab um, Behrad are active contributors to this um, program. Um, moving on to the features, uh, the dominant features of the language curriculum. The first, and I dare say the most um, critical component is the faculty. Uh, I'm um, happy to say that uh, all uh, language instruction staff are uh, trained in uh, second language um, teaching and learning as a discipline. And when I say as a discipline, it, it means um, uh, that there is more than 60 years of systematic research in all aspects of the language uh, um, published in numerous specialized journals and uh, archived in various research databases. So the point is that our um, language uh, curriculum is really evidence-based and uh, is informed by this body of research. A second and uh, prominent feature of the curriculum is that uh, it is uh, geared to the clearly articulated proficiency benchmarks. We don't teach in the dark and you know, there is a destination uh, clearly articulated and both teaching and instruction and, and assessment are done in reference to these descriptions and performance indicators. Uh, currently, a very influential um, proficiency guideline is that of ACFL, the American Council on Teaching Foreign Languages. Our uh, curriculum is more or less geared to this um, um, uh, influential um, proficiency uh, guidelines. I don't go into the uh, proficiency benchmarks in, uh, because of uh, uh, time, but I would be happy to get further into uh, what it means. Um, a second component, a, a third uh, component of um, the curriculum is the um, instruction materials. We uh, tend to use um, in-house materials and uh, rarely um, um, commercially produced materials. And there are several reasons for that. Perhaps uh, one major reason is that uh, uh, commercially available books are um, not able to sustain a very robust and, um, and, and comprehensive curriculum uh, like ours, since you know, we have um, courses from 100 level to all the way to 400 level. So they are typically you know, at the 100 and 200 level. So for that main reason, we tend to um, uh, rely on our own materials. A second reason maybe is that um, um, Sometimes they are not uh, squarely um, prepared uh, in reference to the needs of typical American undergraduate students. So uh, we need to um, have um, materials that are uh, that accommodate those needs. There are other reasons, but I uh, uh, um, won't go into detail now. But, but but I would be happy to elaborate further on that. Um, generally, our um, instruction materials are informed by the state of art theories in the field. Um, again, they are um, um, uh, calibrated with proficiency benchmarks. Uh, they are typically integrated uh, in terms of the skill development. We have a particular emphasis on development of speaking fluency. And lastly, 
while the focus of our materials are on the Iranian standard Persian, we uh, are also mindful not to ignore the other two important national varieties. So we believe that part of the um, um, competence of a, a competent speaker of Persian is to be able to position their interlocutors in terms of um, where they're coming from. Um, moving on to two other um, curricular mother, models. Um, one is a, a type of transitional courses um, that we have in place. So traditionally, it has been the case that students um, um, after one or two years of the language study are led to plunge into masters, masterpieces of Persian literature. Um, and But we tend to think that, uh, for instance, literature is a specialized register of, of Persian and, um, and, and they need their unique um, uh, um, courses. So uh, in our curriculum, when uh, students uh, uh, complete one uh, levels one to 300, then they go through a, um, these transitional courses and then which, is, which combines content and language. Uh, and then after that, they would move into fully um, uh, uh, courses that are fully taught in Persian with no linguistic accommodation. So typically, if you look at this um, figure, you will see that in, in this particular model, um, um, a typical three credit course is divided into three sessions on three days. And um, uh, the Wednesday session is taught by the, a disciplinary specialist, for instance, uh, a, a media specialist, a political scientist, in conjunction with and collaboration with a language specialist. They collaborate prior to Wednesday session. They come up with the language resources and notions uh, that are to be covered in Wednesday, on Wednesday session. And uh, on Monday session, students go through a number of um, uh, advanced organizing activities involving language and content. Then we move on to Wednesday session. And the, uh, the Wednesday session is also video recorded. And then based on the video recording, uh, so following or subsequent materials are created, which recycle both the language and um, the meanings covered in, on Wednesday session. So if you're interested in um, um, uh, more details, it's been already published in uh, the Journal of uh, Less Commonly Taught Languages. Um, uh, and uh, the other um, model, sorry, that I'm happy to report is for those students who are really dedicated to Persian studies and are willing to go to the extra mile to uh, achieve superior language proficiency. So these students um, would be going through an enriched type of curriculum, which involves co-curricular activities in addition to regular language classes. They are paired with native speaking fellow students at least three um, hours per week. They are periodically tested to monitor that they are meeting uh, progress benchmarks. Uh, and they also commit to one additional final capstone year, which involves intensive summer institute, followed by a full academic year, fall and spring. Uh, it also involves a living and learning uh, component. Uh, uh, they live together in a house. Uh, and mentored by a native speaker and do a lot of um, cultural activities, uh, guided cultural activities. They also require to do internship requirements, 136 hours. Um, uh, typically our students have been placed to at uh, various institutions like um, uh, Woodrow Wilson, Carnegie Institute, Tavana, even uh, the Loving Care Adult uh, Care in uh, Gaithersburg. And at the end of the program, they are um, tested and certified by the ACTFL institution 
um, and um, um, which is a considered a third party. And students who are willing to commit to this um, track would be uh, eligible for a scholarship in the amount of $20,000 to cover um, participation costs. And that was the last uh, slide. Thank you so much for your time. I would be happy to take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Ali John. That was fantastic. You know, I must say that I am really in awe of the depth and um, impact of the program. I've seen its results firsthand in my own students and people coming in to use the program. But I've also been impressed with, I remember that one year I was um, following the Summer Institute very carefully. And, and it was very interesting that in the middle of the two sessions, there was an assessment done based on various um, practices so that the second half of the summer could be adjusted to make it more effective. And I think it's that level of hard work and dedication that makes this program possible. I'm really glad that you mentioned, Elijan, that this is entirely made in-house and um, by scholars in the field, our own very colleagues. And so we can be very, very proud of this program. I think I'm going to give stop for a few minutes in case anybody wants to ask um, Professor Abbasi a question. Um, you can, I think, raise your blue hand or your um, uh, normal hand. Uh, Marjanjun, if you saw any hands, would you please uh, enable people to speak? Feel free to type your question in the chat box also. If I may, if you have any questions you know, later on, please feel free to let me know. Uh, my contact information, I would be happy to share, and it's available on our website. Yes, that's, that's very true. And, and please, if you know um, younger potential learners, uh, not that age matters, <laughs> You know, just let them know about the program and we continue to do, of course, our own work in getting the word um, out about the program. And I think it's um, time for our musical part ending due. Um, imagine, I noticed that um, in our interview with um, Behrad that we got a bio there kind of, a, but we do, haven't heard anything about the, vocalist, the singer, Mina Shai, would you like to introduce her if you have information there? Of course. Um, so Miss Mina Shahi was born in Tehran and is a practicing nurse. She first started learning sitar in Tehran alongside Ali Khaki and vocal lessons with uh, Nazli Pesyan. In the US, she concluded her vocal lessons under the supervision of Shohre Majd and completed her sitar lessons with Behfar Bahaduran. She has performed with musical groups, Qafil uh, Salar, led by Behrad Tabakoli, um, and um, also had solo performances with Behfar Bahaduran on various occasions. Um, Wonderful. So I'm going to just recite the Ghazal for a couple of minutes, which you're going to hear as part of the performance. And it's a Hafez, it's a famous Ghazal. So. هر که جانب اهل خدا نگه دارد هر که جانب اهل خدا نگه دارد خداش در همه حال از بلا نگه دارد حدیث دوست نگویم مگر به حضرت دوست که آشنا سخن آشنا نگه دارد دلا معاش چنان کن که گر بلغزت پای فرشتت به دو دست دعا نگه دارد. گرد حواست که معشوق نکسلت پیوند 
نگاه دار سر رشته تا نگه دارد سبا بران سر زلفر دل مرا بینی زروی لطف بگویش که جا نگه دارد چو گفتمش که دلم را نگاه دار چه گفت ز دست بنده چه خیزد خدا نگه دارد سر و زر و دل و جانم فدای آن یاوری که حق صحبت مهر و وفا نگه دارد قبار راه گذارت کجاست قبار راه گذارت کجاست تا حافظ به یادگار نسیم سبا نگه دارد
هران که جانب اهل وفا نگه داره خدا در همه ها حدیث دوست نبویم مگر به حضرت دوست که آشنا سخن آشنا نگه
گوار راه گذارت کجا است حافظی دیادگار نسیم سبا نگه دارد
بسیار عالی واقعا لذت بردیم خیلی روح انگیز بود صدام بسته ولی خیلی زیبا بود استاد توکلی نمیدونم رو خط هستن یا نه برای اینکه دانشجو داشتن میدونم که در یه مرحله لازم بود برن برای کلاس ها This was fantastic as uh, Ali John explained we have in the past invited Ustad Behra um, Tawakoli to, to contribute to our program as we think it's so important for the students to learn about Persian art and culture firsthand. So um, if we don't do we have anything else I think we have reached the end of our uh, welcome session but unless um, um, John wants to add anything just wanted to thank everybody before uh, singing and bad English singing as as Baran Tamome Dustano Hamrahane Roshan Roshan community خیلی تشکر می کنم حضورشون و همراهیشون همیشه باعث دلگرمی ما بوده توی برنامه ریزی های فرهنگی و ازشون خواهش میکنم که در آینده با همین حضورشون با معرفی واحده درسی ما و برنامه های فرهنگیمون به مردم در دی ام وی خیلی بیشتر از ما حمایت میکنن و حالا اگه اجازه بدین من به انگلیسی هم اینو بگم Thank you so much for being part of Roshan community You are, uh, your ongoing support and involvement have ensured the continuity of the Roshan cultural programming. Uh, we have actually big hopes and ideas for the future. For instance, expanding our academic and cultural development and community engagement programs, collaboration with new groups and disciplines and international exchange. Uh, you can help us achieve our goals by introducing our institute and courses to the members of the community and the students and by donating to Roshan Institute. Um, thank you so much again for joining us today. Man, we don't have a question. I think I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for all the conversations that I had with you. I'm very grateful for you. As usual, we have future plans. We um, hope to expand on the geographical areas that we reach. and disciplinary areas that have not so far been a part of our um, um, efforts at this point, and we can add them in the future. So um, I see that some friends are joining us. Unfortunately, this is the last um, part of the program, but we, will, we have recorded this, it's going to be Um, on Roshan's site and which actually pretty soon will be totally updated as the university is working on our, all our websites to provide a more user-friendly but also re revised version of our website. With that, thank you all very much. Be our ambassadors and get the word out about the program and join us in our efforts now and in the future. Thank you very much. And thank you to our presenters and to my colleague, Marjan, who's a great support and um, help in what we achieve here. And thank you, John, for being such an amazing learner, but also having joined our program. Um, so we look forward to much more of this. And with that, have a wonderful, late afternoon and see you very soon in our future programs thank you yes thank you all bye what office